Finding gainful employment in Scarborough is obviously a priority, but also a huge problem for too many. What are your plans to bring jobs back to Scarborough? Is the question, and we start with Mr. Sucknack. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. Selling. Uh, I'm going to start off by um, referring to a personal anecdote. I'm a manufacturer. I started my manufacturing business here in Scarborough, root in Scarborough, and a number of years ago I had to move it just north of Steeles because there wasn't the appropriate infrastructure, uh, land, uh, or buildings available. And I want to change that as mayor. As budget chair, what I did is I made sure that we stayed competitive by bringing in a uh, business competitiveness plan. We're never going to be the cheapest jurisdiction, but we have to be competitive. That's a program that expires a couple of years from now, and as mayor, I will continue the program to keep our business taxes low and to keep us competitive. But as well, there's some things that we can do and we need to do here in Toronto. We need to harmonize the rules across the GTA so that businesses aren't jumping across borders, but in fact come here because they want to secure jobs and, and create investment here in the city. We need to uh, encourage and preserve our industrial and commercial areas. And what that includes is that includes inside of those um, residential units, those mixed-use buildings, areas for young businesses to start. Because as often as not, our young businesses, our new businesses, our businesses starting with students, are those of high-tech businesses. From kids from Centennial College around the corner, or from Ryerson downtown, they can start in one of those units, they can start next to home, and we need to encourage that with the infrastructure and allow them with the zoning. Lastly, we need to make sure that we provide a, big, a clearinghouse in the city, and this is what the city can do and has been remiss in not doing. Because the city is aware of all of the programs available, it's aware of the job subsidies, it's aware of jobs available, and it has a great economic development department. We can put all of those available, all of those um, easily uh, available to people to make sure that it's accessible information. Thanks, so sir. there's a Great number time. of programs that we can do. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And what do you have, Karen Sands? Two minutes. Thank you, Chris. About employment. And we know it's a serious issue across the city, but in Scarborough is where it is felt most acutely. Because people in Scarborough have the longest commutes because they have the least access to transit. And what we know and what we've seen and what I've seen firsthand, because I represent an, an area in Eglinton, that when you build the transit, the jobs will come. And people will choose to live and work and invest where the transit is. And we've seen it happen in Scarborough around the Scarborough Town Center. But what we need to do is we need to stick to our plan so that people have confidence that we are going to build that subway in Scarborough, that we are going to expand transit in Scarborough, so that not only the jobs will come to Scarborough, but if you have a job that's not in Scarborough, it will take you less time to get there. Because the most important thing that you have is your time. And you shouldn't have to spend your time being stuck in traffic, going to work, going to school, going to appointments, or going to visit family and relatives. You should spend your time doing the things that you want to do. So that's why it is so important and so critical and why this campaign is so focused on transit and, and transportation and congestion and back to trust. Because fundamentally it will come down to who do you trust to build your city and make it a place that people want to come and best. A place where people want to live and choose to work, want to raise their kids, want to buy their home. Who is it? that you trust to build that city. Is, the audio is clean, clean, but there's a constant hiss through the whole I'm getting crackle. It's a crackle. Yeah. 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 No crackle. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stintz. Over you, Mr. Tory. Two minutes on jobs. I put forward the first elements of a One Toronto Jobs Plan, and I call it One Toronto because I felt very strongly that the jobs uh, and attention to creating jobs and attracting investment to all parts of the city hadn't been equally shared. And I specifically referred in the plan uh, to uh, initiatives that we can undertake to benefit Scarborough and to have jobs attracted and created here. And I'll start by saying that the transit projects that we've talked about tonight, both the Scarborough subway and the Smart Track, will be magnet for, magnets for jobs. They will connect people to jobs. They will attract investment to come here because it will be close to the public transit. 
So I think it starts with that, that you've got to have a way in which people can get to and from work in Scarborough. Of course, it goes through there, from there, to keeping taxes low and to making Toronto really open for business. I was at a meeting with food industry people. Food processing is a big, big industry in Toronto now, and one of the people there was saying that it took nine months to get uh, approval for a very small little addition he wanted to put on his plant, and in the same period of time, he set up an entirely new plant in Brantford, Ontario. And that's going to happen to us over and over again. We can't afford to lose jobs because things down at City Hall don't work properly. I have in this plan put forward specific incentives, some of them in the city's toolbox right now. They could be used right now to take the lands around the Scarborough subway and encourage people to invest and create jobs there. Youth unemployment, I've talked there specifically about taking the programs that are successful in the city, the ones that are the best, that work well, and, and doubling in the first year that I'm there, the number of companies participating in the best program, doubling the number of jobs that go with that and making sure that Scarborough gets its fair share. And finally, the mayor has to be the chief salesperson. The mayor has to be a credible, reputable salesperson yes. sales for this city, going right all over the world and talking to people all over the world about bringing jobs to Scarborough, real, permanent, long-term jobs, and I intend to do just that to get every job to this city that I possibly can. I know what it's like to live in a household parents cannot find a job. I know how so destroying it is. And I have talked to parents that said, look, my kids have a degree and they can't find a job. That's why it's important that we create jobs in India. My plan is to create 5,000 jobs for young people by requiring companies doing big work for the city to make sure they hire them. It's a practical plan. It's been done in Vancouver. It's been done in Regent Park. It's happening in Alexander Park. It can happen right here in Scarborough, creating jobs for local young people. <laughs> I, I will also help small businesses to create jobs by cutting small business tax, by helping immigrant entrepreneurs set up shop, by linking them with existing business, it works well elsewhere. We can do that here also. And today, young people cannot wait. They need the jobs now. A lot of the talk that we've been hearing is about later, few more years, five years, eight years, 10 years. They cannot wait so long, especially young people. That's why we need to establish a central agency to bring all the different agencies together, whether it's the Invest Toronto or Economic Development Division, bring it together as a global Toronto so we can sell Toronto outside this country. We must speak with one voice so that we can be successful. I have represented Canada in other countries and I will do so as your new mayor, representing you proudly to make sure that there are jobs coming here in Toronto and to Scarborough. Thanks, Chris. The proof's in the pudding, folks. You look at our city right now. 58,000 new jobs. The city is absolutely booming. We have more cranes in the sky than five major cities in the United States. This is through lower taxes, finding efficiencies, and not implementing gas tax, not implementing revenue tools that guarantee will be implemented if anybody else on this stage is elected as mayor. You know it, and I know it. They're just not telling you. We have to, governments in a position, governments in the position to create an atmosphere for creating jobs. It's not government that creates the jobs, it creates the environment and atmosphere with lower taxes and safe streets and hiring more police officers like I have. And we must invest, we must invest in the Gardner Expressway. You can't have the best of both worlds, folks. You know it. I have proven in the last 14 years, 14 years in government at City Hall, that I've watched every single one of your tax dollars. And it goes back 
just, just, just two days ago, spending four and a half million dollars on a BMX track, and going back to spending a million dollars on the waterfront for uh, pink umbrellas and uh, rocks. Folks, it's a waste of money. I have created jobs, I have worked with youth. Nobody's worked with youth in close than I have. I've been working with you for 22 years. Nobody else on this stage can say they've worked close with you than I have. Folks, my record speaks for itself. It's a record of success, success, success on jobs. unemployment in the city, higher than the national average, as it has been for a long time, 20% unemployment among young people. You talked about the 53,000 jobs that you said have been created under your leadership, or maybe it was 58. The bottom line is, it's a lot less than the 83,000 young people between the ages of 15 and 24 who are not in school, not in training, and not working. And I would say that is not a city that is booming, sir, and that you should have a lot greater ambition than to be so satisfied with what's going on in this city with all those people out of work and losing hope because you're so satisfied that this city is booming. Not for them, sir. Innovative companies. That's why I went to Ryerson to create the Innovate Toronto program. 
What that will do is that that will encourage those young students to come out and have their first contract with the city. It's such a huge step up. And that will create those jobs, those beginning jobs that will create the, the future prosperity of our city. Thank you, Mr. Sarkin. Ms. Ford, do you want to just briefly... Well, uh, again, if you look at the city four years ago and now, everyone will tell you all they see is cranes. Cranes are jobs. 58,000 new jobs, again, lower taxes. I, I, want to remind, I, I want to remind my friends, I want to remind my friends. My friend Olivia, you have to lead by leadership. And if you don't take care of expenses in your own backyard, you, 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 voted, Olivia, you voted for an 86% pay increase when you were a school trustee. You remember that? Mr. John Tory, you gave the highest, highest increase. You voted yourself a 25% pay increase as an MPP. How can you sit here and say, I know about money, I know about creating jobs, when all you do is go in your own pocket? And then that's exactly what I'm Sony Center go tens of millions of dollars over budget. We saw the Nathan Phillips Square upgrade go tens of millions of dollars over budget. That was Union Station, little. tens of millions of dollars over budget. Project after project after project on your watch when you're the mayor. The man who says he's got everything under control down there. You have no idea. We know what you were doing and it wasn't managing the taxpayer's money. Forego the third broad policy question and go straight to audience questions because uh, I think that was a fair 